Hey y'all, today I'm gonna show you how I make my broccoli cheddar orzo. You can find this recipe on deepfriendhoney.com along with all of my other recipes. The recipe calls for four cups of vegetable broth. I didn't have any on hand, so I made some using Better Than Bouillon's roasted vegetable base along with some water, just mixed all together. And then I roasted my broccoli. Now, you don't have to roast the broccoli for this recipe. You can boil it or steam it or whatever. I like roasting it. Um, I roast it in a 475 degree oven. Season the broccoli really simply with onion powder, garlic powder, kosher salt, and then some grapeseed oil just to help everything adhere. I like to roast the broccoli while I'm working on the orzo so that it just kind of flows together. But if the multitasking intimidates you, just cook the broccoli first. It's not gonna matter at the end of the recipe. The base of our orzo is a roux. We melt half a stick of butter over medium high heat, and then we saute some yellow onion just until it's translucent. It'll take about five to seven minutes. Translucent meaning some of the pieces are slightly see-through. After that happens, we stir in the garlic, and then I just let that cook for a minute or two just until I can smell the garlic. Next, I sprinkle in the all-purpose flour, just a little bit less than the amount of butter that I added earlier. And then I stir them together and let it cook with the garlic and the onions. I'm just letting the flour taste cook out. It just takes about two or three minutes or so. I don't want to add the liquid before I allow the flour to cook because if I don't, that raw flour taste will kind of impart itself on the entire dish. It's, it's no good. After the flour taste has been cooked out, I add in the vegetable broth along with half of the milk that's called for. Not all of it, so I like to reserve some in case I want to loosen it towards the end of the recipe. And I add in the dry seasonings, which are dried oregano, ground mustard, ground white pepper, seasoned salt, and black pepper. And next we add in the orzo along with a little bit of lemon juice. And then we're gonna bring that to a simmer reduce the heat to medium low, cover it, and just let it cook until the orzo is tender. Once the orzo is tender, we're gonna add in the remaining milk. It's up to you if you wanna use the whole cup that's left over, or if you want yours maybe a little tighter than we like ours. It's you know, you do you. You know your taste buds better than I do. But after you have the milk mixed in, you're going to add in that beautifully roasted broccoli from earlier. And then you're going to cover and let this simmer for about three to four minutes. We just want to let these flavors melt. And the last step of this broccoli cheddar orzo is stirring in the sour cream and the shredded sharp cheddar cheese. So the recipe calls for sour cream, but yes, you did just see me add cream cheese. That is because I didn't realize I was out of sour cream until I was pulling out the ingredients to make this. And I had like, my mouth was all set on it, so I had to follow through. I figured cream cheese would be okay as an alternative, and it was. I actually couldn't tell the difference between the regular version and this version. Um, so cream cheese or sour cream will work. Don't skip it. It adds this like really nice level of creaminess that you will miss if you omit it. So don't omit it. Use sour cream or cream cheese. And then instead of just sharp cheddar cheese this time, I used extra sharp cabbage cheddar cheese. I served this broccoli cheddar orzo with these crispy chicken cutlets, basically just fried boneless skinless chicken breasts. Um, and I'm gonna upload the video on how I make these either later today or tomorrow. But either way, thank you for watching. I am very grateful you decided to spend five minutes of your day with me today. I hope you have a great rest of your week.